Hi, leading by example, uh, rule of five to seven, here's a variation on a theme. What I've done here is taken value buying categories right here, and I've uh, contrasted it to the cost to serve. So if we have somebody who's a low cost to serve and they don't buy value, that would be the, the pure price buyer at the wholesale club. So when you go into a wholesale club, you know, you you get what you get. It's, it's all, you know, bring your own kind of thing. Um, a next step up would be somebody who's a very large buyer. Maybe they're buying direct and they're saying, you know, we're buying direct, but the truth of the matter is we think if we buy it through you and pool our volume with your volume and you deliver it with some other things, the total economic could work out. You say, great, well, we want to charge you, you know, our list price less, something. No, 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 we know what your cost is, and we don't want to pay for some of the services that are in your standard service model. So we want to basically start from your cost and add only the items we want, and that's what we want to pay for. So that's a cost plus contract buyer. You see in, in some distribution channels a bifurcation where... There tends to be a traditional full service model starring outside salespeople, and then there's the cost plus contract kind of things. For notably in restaurant trade, you'll find that the food service distributors will have full service division. They call it the street business, and then they have the systems contract business where they're taking care of, of large regional chains on a, on a cost plus basis. Uh, where you have very high cost to serve and you have very high personal attention, that's the that's the high end uh, exotic uh, beauty salons and so forth and Rodeo Drive and so forth. So you think, my gosh, they're they're charging ridiculous prices for the haircut or the suit. But I talked to a guy who made custom suits in New York City once, and he, I think at the time he was spending eight hundred dollars a suit just in rent per month. So you know, don't think that, that you know that guy at the at the airport who's charging you know, a ridiculous price for a scoop of ice cream or a piece of pizza is making all the money. The airport charges such a high rent. That's why they have a, such a high high price to, that they have to charge and try to put some 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 uh, you know attention that goes with it. Over here we find people who are are high value buyers and, but they're low cost to serve because they just love us and they don't need a lot of attention and, and, and we love those kind of guys. That's where we make good net profit. As opposed to the other extreme where we have somebody who uh, is high cost to serve because they want just in time delivery by the teaspoon of something and they're trying to shop the price out all the time. Part of why they're shopping the price out is when you find a customer with a very high cost to serve, they have a lot of hidden costs at their place. They have emergency purchases because they're out and they have downtime costs and that makes them unproductive, unprofitable, and so they feel compelled to shop more aggressively for the price. Whereas people up here at point four, because they're so disciplined and so focused and thinking about the total elephant of supply chain on the buy side and, and, and value on the, on the sell side, they actually make great money and they organize us. So we have low cost to serve and they, and they don't have to beat us up for a low price because they're already making great money. So it's just sort of interesting that, that these, these people really, in a sense, manage and make us, whereas these people really, unfortunately, unmake and manage us. And we need to be proactive uh, with, with this, this quadrant down here. So that's another way of looking at this whole dimension of uh, value buying philosophy categories. Thank you.